Mermaid010 has asked a question on the forum about um, blending an object here in Bryce with a HDRI backdrop here. This is one of the HDRI backdrops that was provided free with the Bryce content supplied with Bryce 7.1. I thought this is an interesting question and there are a number of different ways you can go about this and I've done videos covering some other approaches. I thought I would do a, an alternative approach. It's going to require the use of uh, PaintShop Pro to compose layers, so it's not for the uh, for the Bryce purists that want everything done in Bryce, but it by com combining layers it does offer the opportunity to, for a more precise control over the effect. So I've just launched Bryce, and what I'm going to do is load in at the HDRI image. So use HDRI image, and I'll navigate to where the image is, and it's called Lake dot HDR. And as I says, it's one provided by Horo with the free content that came with Bryce 7.1. If you need to know where that is, Horo has provided a PDF that uh, I can provide a link for at some point. Probably just add it into the video uh, at the top somewhere, like up here. Now that's to remind me. Okay, so I've loaded that in. I'm going to tone map it using the built-in tone mapper. It takes a little moment to put tone map and use rendering scene, so I can see where the camera is. Can't see where the ground is at the, you know, underneath here at the moment, so I'll need to get rid of that ground plane. I'll get rid of uh, the the quality setting down to 16, and I'm going to set it to add to sky. Now at the moment it's been loaded in over the standard Bryce sky, and the sun not, might automatically be disabled, and you can see by the colour of the ground there's not much light. So I'm going to increase the output of the HDRI so I can see it's light in the scene, and get rid of the specularity and what I want to do is rotate it round so it looks a bit like the one that was shown in the example but I must remember to turn the atmosphere off and set it to fully black so there's only the HDRI in the backdrop. I'll now select the plane, delete it, go back into the Skylab and holding the control key down use this little control here to rotate it round so the, the lake is in the middle of the picture there Right, this is going to take a little bit of rendering out when I've got the, all the effects in. So I'm going to modify the document setup to one to one aspect ratio. That'll speed up the rendering process by making it just a little bit smaller. So I've made it that square. And what I want to do is put something out on that lake. Just narrowed the field of view there in the middle of this lake. And it's going to have the reflection. What I will do is go to the object library and bring in something to render. I'll use this uh, Stanford Dragon model from this 3D uh, scanning repository uh, that Horace converted for me, and it can be the the thing that we see in this scene. So I'll just spin him around so he's facing that way, and have a look at him out on the lake there. Now, at the moment, it doesn't look like he's receiving the same light as this scene because the background being tone mapped is a bit desaturated, and there's no reflection for the dragon there. So obviously that would help create the illusion. The material is just the default grey which is a bit boring. So I'll go to the materials and I'm going to use one of the ones from the heating room set. I uh, really like this uh, colour corroded metal. It's got uh, curvature filtering so it works nice with the the dragon itself. And I'm going to increase his reflection so it looks a bit more metallic. And there I've now got him lit. But the thing is the HDRI lighting's uh, not working with the specular component on this model, so I'm going to save the current camera position and move the camera around to find where the sun is in this scene. The sun's there, so I'm going to sky and fog, hold control and alt and double click on the roller ball, and then when I hold control and alt and click on the scene, that'll allow me to bring the sun in to where there's the asterisk is where the sun is now. I want it to be there, so I position my cursor over where the sun is, press escape to switch views, hold control and alt and click. And now I've positioned the bright sun over where the um, the sun is in the HDRI backdrop. I switch back to my original view, go into the Skylab, re-enable the sun, and that'll allow me to have stronger uh, direct sunlight effect on the model. It still doesn't look really integrated into this render though. It, it, just looking at the lighting on him, it's, he looks metallic now because I've given him more reflection and I've got the specular effect working but he's still a bit high contrast so if I choose a different render mode, so let's go into render options, premium effects, true ambience, scatter correction, but I'm not selecting boost light. In this case just the ordinary true ambience with the scatter correction will tend to produce a lower colours response. The boost light brings the colours up and lower the response so I can blend it better into the existing scene. I'm going to lower the maximum ray depth just to 
improved render performance there. And now he's starting to look a bit more like he belongs. The other advantages of premium effects is it can do things like blurry reflections and things like that. And we are going to have to have a reflection at some point. You can see now it's not taking very long because the, the, the model's only small in this scene and uh, most of its HDRI backdrop that it's rendering, so it'll render fairly efficiently. So, as things stand, this is my opening gambit for making this look like it's in this scene. Probably still is looking a little bit too high in contrast, and uh, obviously this isn't the maximum resolution HDRI image that you could have in Bryce. It's sort of a medium resolution image, so the dragon's going to look a little bit sharper. I could soften him by using depth of field effect and other premium effects like that, but essentially, for the first stage of the render, try and get your model looking like it's in the same sort of lighting environment as the rest of the HDRI backdrop. So that might take a little bit more fiddling around with the settings, but I don't want to get too bogged down with that because the next stages are more critical for what we're going to try and achieve. So I'll just let that render out and save this as the first one. So file, save as Lake Dragon 1. Next step, we need to incorporate a reflection. Now if I just put a reflective plane and I'll see, you'll see what happens there. So oh, it's just saving the file, it won't take a second to create. Uh, I've hold control down while I click on ground plane, that will create one in default grey. If I make the material of that transparent with say 20 reflection the, the the immediate problem is that the the grounds not only reflect in the dragon you can see we've got a bit of dragon reflection there but we've also got an issue with the fact that it's reflecting the backdrop drop twice because you've seen the backdrop through and the reflection on the lake so it's the grounds become obvious now we could do things in negative like lights like we've done before but there's other ways of approaching this that Muller uses paint package to compose all the image will turn out to be sort of quicker. Uh, so we need to set this up so now we're just getting the reflection and what we want the reflection to look like. Well if I modify this material now so we've got hmm, so some diffuse to make it white and some reflection I don't know how much of each I'll try 9 to reflection turn the transparency of 10 diffuse and this this is not transparent anymore so I can control the brightness of it because what I'm going to do is try and create white ground where the reflection shows up so I'm going to turn the true ambience um, effect off because we don't need that lower the rays per pixel per, for now and um, I'm going to use blurry reflections to get an isotropic effect on this um, water surface to make it match the lake better I'll set in the diffusion at 90 and the, trans and the reflection at 90 at the moment and because I want to deal with all white because I'm going to use masking I'm going to modify the atmosphere so it's fully white then I'm going to turn the HDRI backdrop off as a backdrop now and we'll see whether we're getting close so you can see now the reflection is not really dark enough but it is blurred and the other thing is I don't need my dragon to be that reflective now I just need it to be quite dark so I'll drop it back to its original level of reflection as the material loaded in so that'll make the reflection show up a bit better on the surface here I need less white in this surface so I'll drop that to say 50 I'll give it more reflection see how that looks so the reflection's a bit darker there and I've got to be a bit careful because if it stretches too far forward remember what the original uh, render I was dealing with was it could start to overlap that grass there but it looks like it's fading out in time. So the anisotropic is working with the blurred reflection and that's uh, scattering this along the ground. So, or oh, the water in this case. I'll turn that down so it's not quite as strong an effect. And, uh, and I'm going to increase the rays per pixel so it smooths the effect out because it's got to blend with the original render. Now that might take a little bit of time because uh, we're using a premium effect here but the the lighting on this dragon perhaps doesn't have to be that complicated so I could cut the HDRI effect out and uh, that that would save me quite a lot of render time as you can see and it's given me quite a, a dark 
reflection but because I'm going to have the opportunity to change the influence of this in the paint package it doesn't matter if the reflection's a bit on the dark side so uh, and and cuz it's blurred you can't see that it doesn't exactly match the original lighting in the scene hopefully so I'll just let this render out as you can see now because we've only got the sun working on this model it's rendering fairly quickly and then the next stage is to produce just a white um, dragon so that that can then be masked over and can use object masking for that and really I don't need to save the HDRI image uh, within this scene which is going to take up quite a bit of memory so I really should have turned that off for, for saving the memory foot footprint of the files but uh, for the sake of the video and the fact that I've got a fair amount of hard drive space now of upgrading my hard drives it's not going to be too bad so I can go back to the original scene while this is still rendering and work on producing the object masked one and then we save that and then I'll show you how to combine them in the paint package to get the effect hopefully so I'm just loading the original scene which is tone mapping and the only reason not to save it with the HDRI and then I've got the dragon selected so I go to render options and I want an object mask there you can also select that from render options and check that value there so that will just give me my object mask which won't take very long to render it'll probably render faster than that but bear in mind I'm still rendering this image in the background so that's that one done now so file save as number two and this one file save as it's going to save over the same because start from the same source file so I'll call that number three so that now is my three components I'll load in PaintShop Pro um, it could be done in other graphic software I'm sure it's just a matter of I understand how this one works mostly so I load in my reflection one and my mask now this mask one I press Control C and then press Control L puts it as a layer on top of the one that I just selected so you can bring up into here the layer controls here I can change the blend mode and use blend mode and use lighten as a slight outline on the dragon because the mask doesn't quite match the anti-aliased picture from the other render mode but don't worry about that that's not going to show up in this case so I need to combine these layers so I can do uh, layers merge merge all flatten so that's now become one raster layer I'll now bring my reflection one in here get hold of this one press Control C to copy it back into the layers area here Control L that's over the top and now I use blend mode multiply and at this stage I can now control the level of reflection alone and you can see that it layers it on top so I probably went a bit over the top there with the anisotropic reflection I might want to review that which is uh, is easy enough to do if, if I go back to where I was before let's say I don't do anisotropic it's going to render a lot faster maybe that was a, not such a good idea so there's a, a straight reflection there rendering in no time as you can see but still a bit on the dark side for this but I can use some blur instead so save as uh, Lake Dragon 2 so I overwrite that one with the anisotropic go back into my paint package here I'll get rid of that, don't save it, hang on to that one wait for this other one to load in and what I'll do is I'll blur the reflection in a different way because I can see that it's not quite as dragged over the surface with that one so I bring this one in and then I go back to the mask, Control C and then uh, Control L and then lighten and then layers merge all, flatten and then I'll do image uh, no effects here or is it adjust? adjust blur I'll use Gaussian blur to soften it so I've softened it a bit there so OK then I can control C that control uh, I'll get rid of this one that I had before so I'll just d delete that one uh, did it currently yes control L over the top go back down to multiply and then I can I can try and blend it to the appropriate level of reflection there it looks like blurring has caused a bit of an edge to appear where it's it's contacting the dragon but I should be in a position if I can get a hold of this layer to urge it up so I could I could reposition 
the reflection because the rest of it's white you can't tell that and then I can decide how much reflection I want in this scene and, and the same approach could be used to get some uh, ambient shadow around the base of the dragon so uh, that's sort of another way of approaching this uh, problem of trying to to get uh, the rendered objects inside the HDRI backdrop but as I said there's a variety of approaches you can take this one just happens to use uh, a paint package which might not be to everybody's taste but I thought it was uh, worth covering so I hope you enjoyed that found it interesting and we'll have a go at uh, using this effect if you want to <laughs>